Oh, so much nostalgia. What's going on, Nostalgic? This is Ryan from the Nostalgia Factor here, back again with another episode of Nostalgic Blasts. Today's blast from the past is Bloody Roar 4 on the PS2. Bloody Roar 4 was developed by Aiding and Hudson Soft back in 2003. This was the fifth and final installment in the Bloody Roar franchise and the second Bloody Roar game on the PS2. Now, full disclosure at the start of this video, I want to tell you guys straight off the bat that I... I am a huge fan of this game. This is a very nostalgic game for me that I've played numerous times, you know, throughout my childhood, and it's a very special game. However, I will be taking the role of the reviewer today because despite my nostalgia, and despite the fact that there are a lot of really good things about this game, it still does hold its fair share of problems, and I can't ignore that, despite how much I like the game. So let's start off by going over the things that this game does right, and then we'll get into the more questionable aspects of it later on. Bloody Roar 4 is a side-scrolling action game similar to Street Fighter or Tekken, while this is a very unique fighting game with a different take on the combat. The various fighters that you can play as throughout the game have a special ability where they can transform into animals known as zoanthropes, which gives them a wide variety of abilities and combos and various other power-ups depending on the character that you choose. These forms are maintained in the game by the Beast Meter, which is a meter that replenishes depending on how many combos you take or how many hits that you end up taking from your opponent. Basically, this controls the current animal form that you're in, and if it runs out, you revert back to your current fighter form. The combat itself uses many different fighting techniques, combos, and various ultimate fighting moves that you can use to your advantage to beat down your opponent, again, depending on the character. Just have a look for yourself at some of these different fighters and see what impressive fluid combat that exists in this game. In addition to these matches that you play against various opponents, there's also different modes that you can play through this game, such as the arcade slash story mode, time attack mode, multiplayer mode that you can play with your friends, and various other different modes that you can tinker with throughout the game, giving it a, a really good replay value. On the surface, just initially looking at the gameplay and hearing about the game, this could be seen as just another generic fighting game. But I feel like with the unique stuff that it brings to the table thus far, with its various different modes that you can play as, different unlockable characters that you can play for, again, sort of a replay value, different fighting modes, techniques, experimentation with characters, story experience, and various other elements, this game offers a lot more than some other generic fighting game. Now that we've covered some of the more vibrant parts of the game, such as the combat and the gameplay, let's talk about the aspects of the game that aren't that good. The story, for example, while it can get intriguing at times, can be a little bit much if you want to experience every single character story. The main overarching story in this game is about a woman named Nagi who is seeking a man named Sion, who is basically responsible for her transformation into a beast known as the Spurious, which when he attacked her in a previous Bloody Roar game, she gained these abilities. The whole game is about her trying to go and get him to undo what he did to her. And of course, Sion, this evil guy, the entire time is trying to pursue the power of a dragon zoanthrope so he can take its power for himself. Despite the overarching story mainly centered on these two, various characters throughout the game, they each have their own mini story arc featuring different sorts of cutscenes, all having the same ending of battling the same dragon Zoanthrope. The main problem here with the story is, despite the fact that the lore can be really cool seeing the different backstories of each of the characters, and the various cutscenes that play throughout the game, it can be very repetitive having to go through the same matches and the same rounds, despite the fact that they're against different characters, you still have to play through 10 different rounds of beating up people various times, and then ending it off with the dragon boss. It can get very repetitive if you want to experience every single story, and that doesn't really do wonders for the combat now that I think about it. 
While each character also does contain different unique movesets, again depending on the animal or power that you possess, it can get very repetitive playing through these different modes, such as arcade mode, time attack mode, even multiplayer mode can get sickening after a while, because it is still the basic, still, you know, beat down your opponent, block, attack, and you win. That is unfortunately a downside with combat, as again, it adds very, very repetitive nature to the game, but overall, I don't really see it as a huge problem, but it is still a problem. The worst part about this game by far, besides the repetitive gameplay and the annoying story elements at times, is, like Mega Man 8, the voice acting. How could I lose to an imposter? Don't give me that. Why don't you just hurry up and return me to my original body? <laughs> you don't seem to get it. Well, the lines themselves can be intriguing dialogue to listen to for the sake of the story. Each of the voice actors sound incredibly bored while de delivering these lines, and the animation for this game isn't that great, considering how half the voice lines don't even match the mouth animation, because you'll have the line playing on the screen while the mouth animation is still going on, like they were just delayed, like they're buffering on a TV screen or a computer screen. Needless to say, the voice acting in this game overall isn't that great, all things considered, and is kind of garbage. However, at the end of the day, despite the repetitive gameplay, the different very story elements being confusing and the horrendous voice acting, this game is still solid overall with the great things that it does, such as the gameplay, various unique takes on fighting games, such as being able to transform to animals. This game does offer a lot of different great things that, despite the bad things, can still be very much appreciated. I do feel like this game is underappreciated because no matter where I look on YouTube or various other social medias, nobody's ever talking about this game, and there's very little footage or reviews or anything to do with this game online. So, again, I feel like, despite the issues that it does carry, I feel like you should check out the game and give it a shot, uh, hopefully based off of what you see here, because, again, despite the problems, it is still a solid fighting game overall, in my opinion, of course. And that's all for today's edition of Nostalgic Blast. Hopefully you Nostalgics did enjoy today's video. But at the end here, I do want to give a shout to my friend, that one Reject. He's a YouTuber that I've known on this platform for some time. He's the one that made the thumbnail for this video. A much better work than what I could ever make. And frankly, Reject, if you're watching this, man, thank you so much for making this. Really appreciate it. If you guys want to go support his channel and his creative artistic talent, go check out his channel. Link in the description down below and show him some support over there. And nonetheless, guys, thank you for checking out today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if if you want to catch more gaming stuff coming your way and comment down below what you guys thought about this review and of bloody war 4 if you've ever played the game fill that mind nostalgics this has been ryan from the nostalgia factor saying until next time keep on gaming